Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Tuesday of the second week of Lent, March 2nd, 2021. I'm Deacon Dennis Holly from Sacred Heart Catholic Church in Richmond, Virginia. Before we begin, let us take a moment to recognize that we are in the presence of God. Let us begin as we always begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever, amen. Lord, send forth your light and your truth. Our first Psalm is Psalm 43 entitled, longing for the temple. Defend me, O God, and plead my cause against a godless nation. From deceitful and cunning men rescue me, O God. Since you, O God, are my stronghold, why have you rejected me? Why do I go mourning, oppressed by the foe? O send forth your light and your truth. Let these be my guide. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. And I will come to the altar of God, the God of my joy. My Redeemer, I will thank you on the harp, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, my soul? Why groan within me? Hope in God, I will praise him still, my Savior and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Almighty Father, source of everlasting light, Send forth your truth into our hearts and pour over us the brightness of your light. Lord, send forth your light and your truth. Lord, keep us safe all the days of our life. Our canticle is taken from Isaiah entitled, Anguish of a Dying Man and Joy in His Restoration. Once I said in the noontime of my life, I must depart. To the gates of the netherworld, I shall be consigned for the rest of my years. I said, I shall see the Lord no more in the land of the living. No longer shall I belong, behold my fellow men among those who dwell in the world. My dwelling, like a shepherd's tent, is struck down and borne away from me. You have folded up my life like a weaver who severs the last thread. Day and night you give me over to torment. I cry out until the dawn. Like a lion, he breaks all my bones. Day and night, you give me over to torment. Like a swallow, I utter shrill cries. I moan like a dove. My eyes grow weak, gazing heavenward. O Lord, I am in straits. Be my surety. You have preserved my life from the pit of destruction when you cast behind your back all my sins. For it is not the netherworld that gives you thanks, nor death that praises you. Neither do those who go down into the pit await your kindness. The living, the living give you thanks as I do today. Fathers declare to their sons, O God, your faithfulness. The Lord is our Savior. We shall sing to string instruments in the house of the Lord all the days of our life. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, keep us safe all the days of our life. To you, O God, our praise is due in Zion. Our second psalm is Psalm 65, entitled Solemn Thanksgiving. To you, our praise is due in Zion, O God. To you, we pay our vows, you who hear our prayer. To you, all flesh will come with its burden of sin. Too heavy for us are offenses, but you wipe them away. Blessed is he whom you choose and call to dwell in your courts. We are filled with the blessings of your house, of your holy temple. You keep your pledge with wonders, O God our Savior, the hope of all the earth and of far distant isles. You uphold the mountains with your strength. You are girded with power. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves and the tumult of the peoples. The ends of the earth stand in awe at the sight of your wonders. The lands of sunrise and sunset you fill with your joy. 
You care for the earth, give it water. You fill it with riches. Your river in heaven brims over to provide its grain. And thus you provide for the earth. You drench its furrows. You level it, soften it with showers. You bless its growth. You crown the year with your goodness. Abundance flows in your steps. In the pastures of the wilderness it flows. The hills are girded with joy. The meadows covered with flocks. The valleys are decked with wheat. They shout for joy. Yes, they sing. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord God, hope of all the earth, hear the humble prayer of your children as we sing your praises. Pour out your Spirit on us so that our lives may bear fruit abundantly. To you, O God, our praise is due in Zion. Our reading this morning is taken from the prophet Joel. Return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Blessed among us today is William Stringfellow, a theologian and social critic from 1928, he was born, to 1985 when he died. William Stringfellow, a lawyer by training and a lay theologian raised in the Episcopal Church, sought through his many books to apply the Word of God to the moral issues of his age. Poverty, war, racism, sexism, the abuse of political and ecclesial authority. His experience of practicing poverty law in Harlem alerted him to the capacity of impersonal institutions, the powers and principalities, to invest themselves with an ersatz spiritual authority. In a series of books, he defined what he called an American moral theology, seeking to, quote, relate the American experience of society and nationhood to the biblical saga and social witness, end quote. My concern, he wrote, is to understand American biblically. This was counter to the opposite and all too common tendency, namely to understand the Bible Americanly. In the late 1960s, he was found to be suffering from a life-threatening life metabolic disorder. This contributed to his tendency to view the world in the light of eternity and a willingness to risk unpopular stands. He was charged with harboring a fugitive when Father Daniel Berrigan, who had evaded imprisonment following his conviction for destroying draft files, was apprehended at his home. At Stringfellow's funeral, following his death on March 2, 1985, Berrigan described himself as the honored keeper and guardian of the Word of God. And this is a quote from William Stringfellow. I believe biography and history is inherently theological in the sense that it contains already, literally, by virtue of the Incarnation, the news of the Gospel, whether or not anyone discerns that, we are each one of us parables. Our responsory, God himself will set us, excuse me, God himself will set me free from the hunter's snare. God himself will set me free from the hunter's snare, from those who would trap me with lying words and from the hunter's snare. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. God himself will set me free from the hunter's snare. You have one teacher, and he is in heaven, Christ your Lord. Our Canticle of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, 
This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You have one teacher, and he is in heaven, Christ your Lord. The response to our intercessions this morning is, Have mercy on us, O God. Sovereign God, you shelter those who take refuge in you. Secure in your care for us, we pray. Have mercy on us, O God. Grant good health to Pope Francis and guide his leadership by the light of the Holy Spirit. Secure in your care for us, we pray. Have mercy on us, O God. Attend to the grief of those who have lost businesses, homes, or loved ones. Secure in your care for us, we pray. Have mercy on us, O God. Give justice to the oppressed and the security of love to orphans. Secure in your care for us, we pray. Have mercy on us, O God. For Sacred Heart Catholic Church, our priests, deacons, deacon candidates, our parish ministers, our parish staff, for all those who donate their time, talent, and treasure to our parish, but especially for all of our parishioners and those of our parishioners who may either be sick or who have died. Secure in your care for us, we pray. Have mercy on us, O God. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to his Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And our prayer during our time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your son as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving mother, and gain for our nation and world and for all our families and loved ones the protection of your holy angels that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, health of the sick, and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Lord, watch over your church and guide it with your unfailing love. Protect us from what could harm us and lead us to what will save us. Help us always, for without you we are bound to fail. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May God favor us with an increase of faith, hope, and love, and give us peace all the di of our days in Jesus our brother. And may the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Have a blessed day. Please continue to take care of yourself and each other. And may God be praised.